This is the re regular meeting of the Mobile City Council. Please stand for our invocation, led by Pastor Jimmy McCants, Mount Calvary Lutheran Church, and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear wise and heavenly Father, the creator of all things that is good for us. First of all, we thank you, O Lord, on the behalf of all who have gathered here today to make decisions that are good for all of the people in the city of Mobile, Alabama. Thank you, Lord, for your many blessings upon us and the citizens of this city. We ask for your wisdom and guidance for our mayor and the various levels of city officials, and especially on all of the city councils. Help them to lead and bring ideas that will be helpful to all the people that they represent. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus Christ who died and rose again to save and forgive. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of Roll call, President Manzi, Vice President Small. Here. Council Member Richardson. Here. Council Member Williams. Here. Council Member Daves. Here. Council Member Rich. Here. Council Member Gregory. Here. Statement of rules. And good morning. 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 <laughs> and our president would not be joining us this morning, but we'll read the statement of rules. At this time, we ask that everyone to please turn off your electronic devices before or upon entering this meeting. Any person desiring to address the council must sign in indicating the resolution, ordinance, appeal, or public hearing agenda item before entering this meeting. When addressing the council, the speaker must state his or her name and address. Any person desiring to speak to the council on a non-agenda item must contact the city clerk office no later than 2 o'clock p.m. on the Thursday prior to the council meeting. The subject he or she wishes to address must be identified and pertain to the city of Mobile business. Any person who has not given proper notice to the clerk and wishes to speak on a non-agenda item would not be allowed to address the council. Each speaker is allowed three minutes to address the council. A bell will indicate the sound at the end of two minutes. The one minute remaining for one summarizing. The second bell indicates the time has expired. When addressing the council there, it will be no personal address to any individual council members. All statements are to be made to the chair who will recognize any council member who wishes to respond. To maintain decorum, there will be no undue applause and or public outcry allowed. Madam Clerk. Approval of minutes of August the 31st. So moved. Second. We have a, a, a motion and a second in the discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. In opposed? Motion passes. Communications from the mayor. Good morning. Good, morning. Good to see everyone here this morning. So my first announcement this morning has to do with the uh, Alabama Hospital Association. Today at noon is calling for a moment of silence uh, in honor of those uh, of 12,000 deaths that we've had in the state of Alabama since the beginning of the COVID pandemic. So at 12 o'clock today at noon, I ask you please uh, be mindful of that for the moment of silence. 
for those who have, uh, not only those who have died, but those who today are actually sick, uh, the families of those individuals, and also all the health care workers who are providing uh, for them. So we appreciate that. Now, last week, to the very end of the week, we were very fortunate to have two representatives from the White House, uh, Dr. Cameron Webb, a senior policy advisor for COVID-19 uh, COVID equity, and Dr. Miriam E. Delphin Ritman, Assistant Secretary of Mental Health in the Department of Health and Human Resources. They made several stops throughout the city, seeing what we were doing. My understanding is that they were very, very impressed with what we're doing at the Civic Center, because we're not only doing testing there, we're doing vaccinations there, and now we're in the process of doing uh, the uh, infusions, the monoclonal uh, infusions there. So anyway, they were very impressed with that, and among other things that they saw here. Today I have two proclamations, and in reading those, <clears throat> Uh, I would like for those, first it's going to have to do with the uh, National Recovery Month in the City of Mobile. So if Jane Bartlett Pappas with the Drug Education Council, if y'all would please come down to the uh, podium. Uh, Karen Elmore, People Engage, Engaging in Recovery. And, um, and then Nancy, is it, Nancy, how do you pronounce your last name? Thank you very much. <laughs> I didn't want to butcher that, Nancy, but thank you for being here. Okay, so the proclamation reads, whereas National Recovery Month is an international observance held every September to educate people about how substance use and mental health services can enable individuals and their families to live healthy and rewarding lives, and whereas this observance <clears throat> celebrates the millions of people in recovery from mental health and substance use issues, reminding us that behavior health is an essential component to overall health. Treatment and recovery services for mental and substance use disorders and co-occurring disorders in effect and people can do and recover in our area and around the nation. And whereas addressing and overcome mental and substance use disorders and co co-occurring disorders is essential to achieving healthy lifestyles, both physically and emotionally. We must encourage relatives and friends of people with mental and substance use disorders and co-occurring disorders to implement preventive measures, recognize the signs of a problem, and encourage those <clears throat> in need of help to seek the appropriate treatment and recovery support services. And whereas, to help more people with uh, life experience achieve and certain recovery faces and voices of recovery favor, invite all residents of Alabama to participate in National Recovery Month. Now, therefore, I, William S. Stimson, the 108th Mayor of the City of Mobile, do hereby formally recognize the month of September as National Recovery Month in the City of Mobile. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Jane Bartlett Pappas with the Drug Education Council, 219 Grand Boulevard, 36607. Um, I just wanted to say our FAVOR mission statement. We are um, all members of FAVOR, Faces and Voices of Recovery, Coastal Alabama. Um, the mission statement is we're a diverse group of individuals and organizations committed to serving those affected by substance use disorders. The mission of FAVOR is to promote the benefits of long-term recovery through advocacy, education, and access to resources, thus resulting in healthier individuals, families, and communities in coastal Alabama. FAVOR strives to reduce the stigma, oftentimes associated with addiction, and share the message that recovery is possible. We believe everyone deserves the opportunity to live happy, joyous, and free. Together we stand as the faces and voices of recovery for our community, and we welcome any individual or organization that is willing to do the same. Thank you so much. This means a lot to us. Thank you. Thank you for being here. This time I would ask Lydia Barber, Jamie Brett, 
uh, Lanny Ames, Don Wilson, and Catherine Rogers uh, to please come to the podium. And uh, this proclamation has to do with National Suicide Prevention Week. And the proclamation reads, whereas suicide remains the tenth leading cause of death in the United States and the second leading cause of death among individuals between the ages of 10 to 34, and whereas the United States, uh, where in, whereas in the United States of 47,000 people died by suicide in 2019, suicide rates have increased 30% over the last two decades, with suicide rates finally decreasing 2.1 percent between 2018 and 19. And whereas it is estimated that in 2019 there were 1.38 million suicide attempts. In 2019, suicide was the 12th leading cause of death in Alabama. In 2019, 804 people died by suicide in Alabama. Over 90 percent of the people who die by suicide have a diagnosable and treatable mental health condition, although often that condition is not recognized or treated, and whereas organizations such as the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention are dedicated to saving lives and bringing hope to those affected by suicide. Through research, education, advocacy, and various resources, increased improvement and access to quality mental health and prevention services help bring aid and awareness to the leading causes of suicidal deaths. <clears throat> now, therefore, I, William S. Stimson, the 108th mayor of the city of Mobile, do hereby proclaim uh, September 5th through September 11th as National Suicide Prevention Week. Congratulations and thank you. You, you, um, you all need to Face the council, Mr. President. Can I speak? Yeah, can we uh, can we see y'all's faces yeah, real turn quick? Turn around and face yeah. us. Thank you for all you do. It's great to have y'all here. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Who do you pay that photographer? <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> thank so, you. would you like to make some more? Just, just a very, yeah. very yeah. little. Thank you so much. Thank you. So much. Um, thank you. Hi, I'm Lydia Barber, and I'm the um, organizer of the South Alabama Out of the Darkness Walk that takes place in Daphne, but serves um, Mobile County and Baldwin County every October for the last 11 years. And um, I'm also on the board of the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention of Alabama. And I am surrounded by um, friends who have um, been affected by suicide loss and also who work for suicide prevention. Um, I cannot thank you enough for this proclamation. It really means a lot to us. Um, as you heard the statistics, suicide is, um, is, <clears throat> is very um, prevalent and um, there can be, there's a lot that can be done, and um, the AFSP and the Out of the Darkness Walk and all these people that you see around me work tirelessly to make sure the word gets out because education is key. So this is part of it, um, and I really appreciate the proclamation, and um, thank you very much for having us here. Thank you. Ooh. I will figure it out. <laughs> thank you so much, Mayor. I have a proclamation. Thank you. And that concludes my remarks. Ms. Rich. Thank you. If the, anyone from the Childhood Cancer Awareness Month is in the audience, if they, they can come forward to the podium. Wow, best job in the crowd. I wasn't expecting such a great crowd, but I know how dedicated this group is. If y'all could just face this direction until we get through the, so we get to see y'all again. And I, um, I will not present the proclamation, but everybody who is here will be getting a copy. We'll make sure of that. And thank you for being with us. Every September, we mark Childhood Cancer Awareness Month to educate and bring awareness to this issue and highlight the need for more funding and research. 
And whereas statistics show that one in every 285 children in the United States has cancer, every two minutes a child is diagnosed with cancer and more children are lost to cancer in the United States than any other disease, yet less than 4%, and we've said this 4% for the last number of years, of the National Cancer Institute's research budget is allocated to cure childhood cancer. And whereas resources in Mobile to help children with cancer include treatment at USA Children's and Women's Hospital, fun activities at Camp Rappahoe, fun fundraising events hosted by Aubrey's Army Foundation 328, Miracle on the Bay, St. Baldrick's for Adrian, Joy of Life on the Gulf Coast, and the yearly event, Operation Superhero, conducted by the Mobile Police Department, where SWAT team members rappel down the side of the hospital dressed in superhero costumes during a bell ringing ceremony in celebration of each child completing their treatment. And whereas this year, with the additional challenges presented as a result of the ongoing pandemic, it is even more important than ever that we acknowledge the devastating impact this disease has on so many young people and their families and provide much needed support to them through the many organizations that serve them. Now, therefore, I, Best Rich Council Member of District 6, along with members of the Mobile City Council and Mayor, do hereby proclaim September 2021 as Childhood Cancer Awareness Month in Mobile and urge all our citizens to keep these children and families in your heart, not just this month, but every month, and support the many organizations serving them. Thank you. If anyone would like to address the council and the audience, feel free. If anybody has a few words or. I'm Jay Nicholas, President, Aubrey's Army. This is my wife, Brooke, Executive Director. And we just like to say thank you for uh, keeping us and, uh, you know, everybody who's been through this. Uh, you know, for us, it's every day, but, you know, people understanding that 4% is not enough, it's a big help. It's a big start. and. Um, that, that's our drive as Arby's Army is to, to continue to push for more than 4%. Thank you guys again. Thank you. And as the director of Rabbit Hope for 20, over 20 years now, I can tell you that this day right here does matter. It matters to be heard and to be seen. And children with cancer, their whole family needs to remember that they are thought of, that it's more than just um, a diagnosis. This is a lifetime change, and there can be great things that can come in their lives. And that happens through days like this. So thank you for remembering not just today, Bess, but thank you for always keeping us in Absolutely. your heart. We appreciate yes, you. Yes, I know thank we you. all think like-minded with that. It's my understanding that the RSA Tower will be lit up tonight, gold, um, to um, also further this information to citizens. That's correct. Yeah, tonight it's going to be light up for, uh, I think, to here and in Montgomery. Uh, I'm Webb Jackson. I'm the president of Joy of Life on the Gulf Coast. Uh, each year we do a big Mardi Gras charity ball for uh, cancer awareness and for raising funds for St. Jude's and other cancer organizations. And we do appreciate your proclamation each and every year. Thank you so much. It's Thank our you. pleasure. Do you want to mm -hmm. pose for a picture so we can? Yeah. Ms. Richard, we'd like for the council to sit on the uh, first row of the dais okay, and stand right behind them. Have them come up? Yeah. Sure. If or they, they can if just green out in the front and we can just go in no, the Everybody, we can line up in front here okay. too. So we come here. Yes, please. Yeah, just if you right can come, if you don't mind. Yeah, let's uh, go. Yeah. yeah. Mayor, would you like to step up? Thank you for being here. Thank you also. Thanks, Thank you.
Thank you all so much. Madam Clerk. Ad adoption of the agenda. Uh, would you all like to add the extension of the Thompson contract? We have that. Yes. Please. Yeah. Where will it be added? Resolutions being introduced. So, um, it'll be under consent. Okay. All right. I move the adoption of the agenda. Second. We have uh, adoption and proper moving the second in the discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 In opposed? Passes. Appeals. We have requests for wave of the noise ordinance on October the 9th. October 24th, um, September 24th, October the 9th, no, October 1st, November 5th, December 3rd. So moved. Second. We have a partial Second. motion and a second in the discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. In opposed? Passes. Public hearings today is a public hearing to consider adoption of the 2021-2022 general fund capital and convention center fund budgets. This public hearing is now open. If anyone in the audience would like to come and address the council, you may do so at this time. Um, Ronald Hunt. Okay. They don't have to be on your list in this case. He, yeah, he'd signed. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't sure whether I had to call or not. Hello, I'm Ronald Hunt. I reside at 7A North Fulton Street, Mobile, Alabama, 36607. And let me just thank God and all of you that I can stand here this year, because a year ago I was shaking so bad from my Parkinsonism that I couldn't enter the Zoom code in my phone to address the budget. And I hope Councilman Manzi that's not here has as big a recovery as I have. I went to Rotary Rehab in January and I am walking and riding the bus down here today. So I have found recovery as a person in recovery and I thank God and I thank all the people that support me. I was wanting to talk to you today about the budget. I mean, Mr. Holt has said the last several finance reports that he's given to you that our sales tax and our revenues are exceeding the amount that they estimated last year and also that they've been much more efficient in many of the city's agencies so that we are probably going to carry over if i'm not incorrect somewhere between 127 and 134 million dollars which will be reserves next year which part of that would pay the finance on the debt part of it would be reserves but I think there probably also should be some money somewhere and we're doing so well to provide some support for our public servants in the city that aren't city employees that are risking their health and risking the health of their families by serving the public in that I'm talking about the Mobile Public Libraries employees and also the Wave Transit that deal with anybody that comes up in the public they have to serve regardless of the situation and I understand that the American Rescue Plan does not under the ordinary definition allow these people to be compensated but I hope you will in some way find some way to revise the budget that the mayor has presented to you to provide some hazard pay for the Mobile Public Library and also for the wave transit and anyone else you may feel but i think those are the two most important i'm also a little concerned i think joel daves called me on friday and i was talking to humana pharmacy about getting a refill so i didn't answer it and when i called back it went to your voicemail so we haven't had a chance to talk about this but i had a few questions that i didn't see on your meeting finance meeting on tuesday that i'd just like to address and wonder what's going on 
One is the urban forestry. I don't know if money was transferred elsewhere, but there's a reduction of about $400,000 in urban forestry, $50,000 reduction to the Sanger Theater. I think maybe that's because they've got that huge grant and maybe they don't need as much money, but I was just curious why it went from 450 to 400,000. The sale program is being reduced. That's the senior program. I don't know the reason why it's almost 50% lower. And there's a 1.4% reduction in special events funding. And what I think is the biggest concern to me is there's an almost 2% reduction in the parks and recreation budget when we're giving 5% raises. I'm uh, concerned about parks and recreation. I think that's important. I realize the Bloomberg Initiative has expired and we need funding for that. We need funding because the late Paul West was such a great executive that he could do two jobs. I'm sorry, Mr. Hunt, unless your time expired. Would the administration like to answer the question that Mr. Hunt had addressed? Uh, Mr. Hunt, the administration said they'll get you an answer. Thank you. And thank you. Madam Clerk. Deanna Murphy. This is regarding the budget. Good morning, Mayor. Good morning, Council Good morning. members. Good morning. My name is uh, Deanna Murphy, 1717 Dauphin Street. I'm the executive director of the VIA Senior Center. We sent out an update to all of you. Hopefully you've gotten it. Just letting you know what we've uh, been able to accomplish during the past year, although it be a very difficult year. We just wanted to um, let you know how much we appreciate your support. We wanted to say thank you. Thank you very much. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And also, thank you all for opening your doors for the uh, job fair we had a couple months ago. Oh, Madam Clerk. Um, I don't have anyone else that signed in for, um, oh, I'm sorry, Addie uh, Kimball. Again, this is just on the budget. This is just the public hearing on the budget. Nothing else is going on at this point. And we do have some people in the audience that are, that are still wanting to speak, so they can... If there's nobody on your list, Madam Clerk. Addie, Addie, uh, Kim. Huh? It, I thought it, well, it says uh, Zillia City Golf Course budget. That's, not That's considering that. Um, That's actually. Budget. Oh, the kitchen. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. It had budget on here. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So is there okay. anyone yeah. that is. Yes. Do we have sorry, anyone else in the yes, audience yes. that would like to come down and address the council about the budget? If you can give us your name and address, please. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm Greg Foster, 2500 Granada Avenue in Westmobile. I'm the uh, same old messenger with the same message. I've been here before and uh, spoke to you about the uh, cost of living raises for fire and police pensioners. And I'm here to do it again uh, this morning. The need for an increase is overdue and, and much needed in this economy, as I stated before. I don't, I don't think you can uh, name one single thing that's not gone up in price in the last 16 years, specifically since October 2005, which marks the last time a COLA was granted to the pensioners for the police and firefighters. Um, I'm here to ask that the mayor submit and you approve an increase in pension benefits of at least 15% across the board to all police and firefighter pensioners uh, who retire or are going to retire before the end of this, uh, uh, before the adoption of this new budget. I learned a lot since my last uh, talk to you on August the 10th when I addressed you with this same issue. It seems there's a lot of misinformation out there that would cause someone to uh, to think that our pensions somehow come out of taxpayer dollars since we are paid through payroll department and our cumulative expense is a budgetary item. This is only a half truth. 
without going through the entire process, payroll is utilized to pay us for an accounting measure and a holding out of deductions. The amount spent on us is reimbursed by our pension fund to the city. It's, so in my estimation, this is a cost neutral issue. No taxpayer dollars are spent except for disability pensions and for in line of duty uh, issues. So I believe we're not debating money issues from taxpayer dollars so much as rather a procedural issue of inserting a line item in the budget to reflect a COLA, which, like I mentioned, is a cost neutral item. And last report I received from the pension board is that our fund uh, was not only solvent, but at its highest level ever. So with respect, I make that same request at this meeting that you consider a cost of living pay adjustment for all police and firefighter pensioners. Thank you. Yeah. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to address about the budget? Thank you, uh, Mr. Vice President. Uh, to the members of the council, administration, the citizens, stakeholders of Mobile, good morning. Reggie Hill, 1007 Center Street. Uh, before I begin, I want to uh, thank Director Holt and his uh, staff for taking their first uh, tackle at this in the administration. Uh, I was presented to an extent where we can all participate in this, and I'm grateful for the public hearing. Uh, to express our concerns. As well, I want to align with uh, my fellow citizens in Mobile and I urge the council members to consider uh, the retirees and the Mobile Public Library workers uh, once you uh, give your counter response to the administration uh, in regards to the budget. Um, I just have a few questions. This is relating back to weeks ago in which I presented to this body. Uh, the city attorney said that he would submit to the council uh, information regarding what nonprofit organizations uh, would need to do uh, in relation to performance contracts. Um, so that's the first piece I would like to have some clarity on. Has that been submitted to the council and would that be relayed to the public um, as well? Um, I would like to know in regards to the performance contracts, it said that it would be moved to the general fund uh, budget, but I have not seen a line item under general fund uh, which identifies these performance contracts. Um, as well, uh, the next piece, we also see where there's a mobile youth initiative, and this has been moved to capital improvement. Um, and this is, I'm wondering maybe if that is where we're identifying the performance contracts or is that something totally separate? Um, and, and those are my primary questions I hope I can get answers to. Now I'm gonna compare the numbers as well and let's start with that last piece on the mobile youth initiative. Uh, it's very interesting to me that um, with a uh, $34.5 million proposed capital improvement to the budget, we only have 200K that's listed for the mobile youth initiative. I think what has been reported is a lot of incidents that we're seeing that might not be conventional for our city that are causing great inconveniences they stem from the youth and it's not looking based on the budget that we're investing how we should if we want to eradicate those issues so that's something i would like to see us uh, look into um, as well our uh, distinguished chairman of the finance committee always asks that we um, highlight where we want to remove resources if we see that there's a need for them to be allocated in other places. Um, I would just like to have some explanation on why there's over a seven million dollar increase into public safety. And uh, I think with the line, the agenda item being on um, listed for the approval of the budget, we can then um, maybe talk in the future time about where these resources can be moved around. Uh, but if anyone would please address those. Uh, matters of concern. I'll save the other remarks for uh, the time that I have listed to comment during presentations and petitions. Um, Ms. Henderson, is it possible that you can really just give the, I guess, the citizens, you know, information about nonprofit groups, how they can go, and um, with the performance um, performance contract with the ARF fund? I believe the mayor had his newsletter last week. Is that something you can address? And how did um, the nonprofits can go by applying for that? Yes, sir. So the the funds for the ARP process, all of those, uh, I'm sorry, for the the RFP process for the ARP funds is listed on our website. Um, all of those 
for the the social service dollars will be listed on our website for um, organizations as well as we are doing uh, district meetings to talk to nonprofits as well and then there will be a meeting held on September the 30th um, for those interested in knowing detailed information of how to apply for those so all of that information will come out this week and it's gonna be on the website correct yes sir Okay, thank you. Mr. And Vice President, with, with all due uh, respect uh, to uh, Director uh, Henderson, this Mr. is not an ARP Mr. public Hill. hearing. This is about the current budget. Mr. Hill, yeah, you know the rules. Yeah. Is there any administration, uh, other administration can go ahead and address Mr. Hill's questions? <laughs> all of them. <laughs> uh, but I mean, we can start with the. Uh, identifying the performance contracts because I believe there was a little confusion on that we just heard dialogue on the ARP we're, we're talking about the public hand for the budget if he'd like to submit his question in writing that's it's a much better pr procedure for us well what's who, the who should he submitted to mr. Woods? because right, we've so, done this before it depends on what question you're he's asking but just typically, all his questions so he just go ahead and submit it to chief barber just send him to director barber okay can, they can say I ask it. a question uh, Ms. Rich. The, the youth initiative, is that the workforce develop where we employ college and high school students during the summer? Is that the 200K? Yes, that's the yes initiative. And that was put into capital? It's in the capital program? Oh. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm trying to bore down his question. If you could speak in the mic, Mr. Holt. The question was about uh, your question about the performance contracts. For Ms. student employee, it's it's to give them job training, if I remember correctly, and for the summer, couple of it's like a six or eight week program maybe. Thank you for the uh, clarity on the youth initiative, um, and so those questions that were asked about the performance contracts that should be submitted to the chief of staff. Right. Yes, sir. That's the, that's what they say. Okay. Now, is there any measure that the council can have if in the past? citizens have submitted documentation to these bodies and there's not been any response or anything uh, that's done in regards to what a citizen request is who should we then uh, communicate with the president president of the, the president council. of the council okay <laughs> that, thank you so much thank you mr hill is there anyone else in the audience that would like to address the council during this public hearing about the budget If not, this budget, I mean, this uh, public hearing is closed. Public hearing to consider vacation of an alley in Edgewood Park. Public hearing is open to, uh, to hear from the public about Edgewood Park. Is anyone in the audience who would like to address the council about this? If not, the public hearing is closed. Presentation of petitions and other communications to the council. Sabrina Mass. She's not present. Terry Mitchell. <laughs> Terry Mitchell, uh, 117 Tally Court. I'm here on behalf of the Animal Advisory Committee. We can't go forward with our work because we are missing an appointee. <laughs> You have five designated correct members, correct? Six. You have six, You're so you have a quorum. You do have a quorum, so you can't go forth. Okay, so there's going to be no further appointees. There should be another other appointees, but you can't go forth with the with your work. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Williams. I got a question for the um, speaker. Um, I understand that there was some sort of meeting was, was were all current appointments invited to that meeting oh yes oh yes um, hmm. absolutely 
Yes, we met informally at the library yeah. just to get acquainted. And um, yes, everyone was invited, absolutely. Was it invited by email or phone call or? Uh, email, no. email, okay. yeah. Yeah. Did somebody uh, feel like they were left out? Yeah, I just didn't know. Uh, what, what was the attendance? Was, was uh, Miss Fitzgerald there? No. Mm. I, don't, I don't know that you got a right email. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe we'll check on that email. All right. Okay. Thank all right. You. I have a question. Who, 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 who invited you all to come? Excuse who me? invited you all to come to the library for, for that meeting? Uh, we just organized it together just to get acquainted. Is that a problem or? No. So um, I would like to request from uh, Council uh, Vice President, was either you, would you get with our president to call a formal meeting of this group so they can be given uh, Mr. President, authority? I can't hear Councilman Richardson. Okay, I'm requesting that, that the vice president of the council get with the president of the council. Uh, to give this group authority to start See. holding their meeting, let them organize, elect the president, elect lead their leaders, set a date <coughs> that they will be meeting, and turn them loose. So what they've done, they've gone out and called themselves a meeting. Normally what we do from the council's side, um, the council president or someone from the council <laughs> We'll call the group together. First time, definitely. The first time. And then from that time on, you all will go from there. Since we have a we, we already know we have a quorum, we have enough people for them to meet. I think it's time for them to come together officially, called together by either the president or the vice president, and then from that point on, let them establish their own meeting dates and time. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Uh, Lambert, if you can just go ahead and get one of your assistants to go ahead and organize that. My schedule is pretty open for the next week and a half, and I'm willing to come and et cetera if our attorneys are available also. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Thank you. and at that meeting, you'll be given instructions about the Sunshine Law as far as having to get out the notice of your meetings because you are talking about a city department that is funded with public tax dollars. So it's certain um, state laws that you have to follow in in your procedure of your meeting open meeting yes yes okay Great. Thank, thank you, you very much thank you thank you Ms. Lambert Reggie Hill <laughs> thank you madam city clerk greetings everybody again uh, Reggie Hill 1007 uh, Center Street um, I think I'm going to work backwards on, on this. There were some uh, questions that I submitted today. Uh, the 40K for the, the tennis coach, there were some questions asked about this a couple of weeks back. Uh, this is a part of the same approval process, uh, whereas people have to come in one of the two meetings with Parks and Recreation, and then that is approved. There were some questions asked about the application. We just never got any clarity on that so I'd like for someone uh, to speak on that um, as well 27-737 uh, um, the calculation of the security payment is there a way that uh, the citizens can uh, get the, the information on, on how those numbers were uh, put together 27-737 just to how we got to that $16,000 number I'm just curious about that myself I'm sure others are uh, as well um, and then uh, lastly well, I also signed up for uh, the budget, but I'm going to speak with the chief of staff and hopefully Director Holton so we don't have to harp on that uh, much longer. And we'll see what happens when we bring that back for a vote uh, next week. Um, but lastly, the probably the most important piece that I um, signed up to discuss, and I'm hoping that somebody will answer those previous questions, was the 27-722. Citizens from all across the city uh, expressed disdain over a plethora of discrepancies, inconveniences, uh, and illegal practices throughout the course 
of the election process. Um, and also on August the 25th, a citizen of uh, Mobile, Alabama, at a regular Mobile City Council meeting, um, presented into the official minutes and record of the City Council, requested a warrant to recall uh, of the Mobile Municipal Elections 2021. Um, and on the 31st of August, uh, our mayor sponsored consent resolution 27-7 Two two, which was approved by this body, with the total disregard to the citizen request uh, and the citizen and the sentiments expressed by residents uh, throughout the city of Mobile, and unfortunately, it's particularly in areas that uh, were east of I-65. Um, I'm going to be sharing some sentiments. Uh, with you all directly. I'm hoping to have some direct communication with this administration as well, uh, as this is a matter in the coming days since um, the last time I spoke to this body about this, there have been quite a few more citizens who come along and express um, their unfortunate experiences throughout this process. And so I'd rather us be able to have something settled uh, between the bodies here, those individuals who are constantly um, and un waveringly participating in the municipal government process. Uh, I would not like to see the, the, uh, the great reflection of our city uh, misunderstood by outside cities, municipalities, or just people in general when this is something I believe we can all tackle and that we all know the reality of, and this is the best time for us to, uh, to move forward on those matters. But I would ask that someone please address my um, original sentiments. Uh, Mr. Audrey, is it possible that you could uh, answer Mr. Hill's question about 27-737 and the other election question that he has? And I'm also going to ask the administration if they could respond to Mr. Hill's questions about the tennis. Just say something. I'll be glad to uh, email uh, Mr. Hill that uh, breakdown cost. I'll do that right away. Oh, thank you, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. we have a breakdown of the time and the cost. Okay, excellent. Would the administration like to address the issues of question about the tennis? Oh, for the instru tennis instructors? So we've recently taken over the tennis contracts and so now what this does is all tennis instructors who were doing this on their own before Participants come in and they pay the city for the instructions. They get connected with the instructors and then we pay them at the end. They, we pay them a percentage of what they taught. And so this is a contract so that we don't have to keep doing it every time so that they don't exceed a certain amount. So every year we will be bringing them back to renew them for the tennis. Um, and most of these are tennis uh, coaches that's been out there for years. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Thank you all for yielding the floor. Madam Clerk. Addie Kimball. And th this has to do with what? This has to do with the Azalea City Golf Course Fuse Kitchen. So it's an agenda item. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is the contract for the food service? Yes. Good morning. Good morning, Mayor, City Council, and City Administrators. Um, myself um, and Angela. Come on, Name Angela. and address, please, for the record. I'm sorry. Six, That's okay. The business or home? Home. Home, yeah. 1612 Andover Boulevard, Mobile, Alabama, 36609. Uh, Again, my name is name. Addie Kimball. Yeah, full name. Yeah. Addie Lamore Kimball. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So um, I'm here to just um, share um, that we've been um, awarded the contract at the Zayu City um, Golf Course. And um, I partnered with a caterer here and we are here to um, let you guys know that we are, our goal is to bring something different to the Zayu City Golf Course. Um, we found out in July, the end of July that we won the contract and um, they do not want a break in service for the golfers they want us to continue the service and it's been a long long process and so i'm just here to um ask you all when you see our contracts come across your desk if you would give it um, immediate attention um, another contract will be coming across um, the you all's desk and i think the police department also and that's our liquor license um, that's going to be coming across but first we got to get the contract signed the lease agreement signed by the mayor and then we'll 
submit in our liquor license and I've also went to Montgomery done my background check so that that's already done and everything that I can do to expedite the process so just here saying that you know when you see our contracts come across your desk if you would go ahead and give it some attention that would be greatly appreciated because we got to open October 1 and they don't want to break in service so we just need your help with that we tried thank you I know <laughs> I know it's been a long process but but I thank you guys thank you good thank luck you. yeah congratulations on your your venture and thank everything. you Madam Clerk. Ordinance is held over. 64031, ordinance to rezone property located at 6636, 3636, 3838, 6660, 6660, 6680, and 6692 Old Shell Road from R1 to R3. So moved. Second. We're moved and second in the discussion. Yes, thank you. Ms. Rich. Appreciate that. I had talked last week about um, possibly slowing down, not necessarily for this particular contract, but the idea of rezoning in the area around the University of South Alabama for student housing. Um, I've spoken to Shayla Biko uh, um, actually a while ago about having that area be isolated on a map and treated as an overlay district. And the opportunity to do that will be during um, the the new UDC codes. It's very important that any programs as far as housing be very well thought out, be, um, have a lot of synergy with the university, not to mention the other programs that are already in place. Um, the occupancy rate is um, not up to speed. Some of that could be attributed to COVID or changes with university policies, but um, for living um, environments for students. I, I know that the change in character over the last um, 10 years has been quite substantial for people that are already invested in the area and it's important to keep their quality of life also um, well prepared and also sustainable. Um, I plan to personally, on um, behalf of the residents that I represent, to just abstain on this at this time because of what I've been trying to share with the administration about the need to have really good planning long range when it comes to the University of South Alabama. It's a huge economic engine and for it to function appropriately and to really be um, a fine location for parents to send their children to go to school. They're not children, they're young adults, so I'll take that back. But to their parents, they are children as they're leaving home and living in our community. We want it to be as positive and as best as possible. So um, I'm not sure I will even be here when you are debating the UDC, but I I would highly recommend that this area now be added as an overlay district so that you can treat it different. You can isolate the area. We already have a parking code that is unique to this area because what we found out is every student will bring their own car and we had a parking code for R3 that did not mesh very well with the R3s that are happening around the campus. So you have a mile and a half radius, you really have it defined by that um, ordinance that took care of parking. So again, it's something that you really need to give great thought to so that it's done right with long range in mind. Thank you. Another discussion. Yes, uh, Mr. Vice President. Yeah, Ms. Gregory. <clears throat> I agree with Mrs. Rich and also the University of South Alabama about concerns with continued building of student housing and what our future is. Um, I'm not going to oppose this today, but I think going forward, we should definitely take a look at planning for more student housing and how it's done possibly as an overlay. Um, once we get the UDC approved and behind us, we still have to take up short-term rentals. So if it is the desire to look at possibly an overlay for student housing, we could look at it then because we don't want to do anything to substantially uh, change what we have already worked on with the UDC. That's why we are taking the short-term rentals after approval of um, the UDC so we could 
we could look at some planning for student housing then when we take up the short-term rentals. I mean, I think that would be an appropriate time to do it. But again, today I'm not going to oppose this. Um, I think going forward, however, some planning and research is certainly uh, a good idea. <coughs> and other council members? All in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? Abstain. Motion passes. Madam Clerk. Consent resolutions held over. 37550 recommend approval to the ABC Board for issuance of a lounge retail liquor class one license for Canary Bar on North Jackson Street. Move, Move to, to table. table. Second. Proper move and second in discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. In opposed? Madam Clerk. <clears throat> CIP resolutions held over. 21711 authorized contract with <coughs> Parton Smith for 2017 CIP Woodcock drainage repairs. So moved. Second. We're probably moving second in the discussion. Yes, sir. Mr. Days. Uh, this is an important uh, drainage project in uh, District 5. This is uh, uh, Woodcock Creek. It's the concrete ditch that is Woodcock Creek. It's the area between, uh, between Airport Boulevard and, and Government Boulevard. Uh, it's got a lot of problems with it. It's the sides are caving in. There's subsidence behind it that's in the, um, some residence yards. This is the first step in a multi-phase uh, uh, project to address drainage issues in the Woodcock Creek watershed. Uh, the total project, uh, Mr. Amberger has indicated to me, is in the four to five million dollar range. Uh, so this is the first step. The next step would be uh, Government Street to, uh, I mean, Government, uh, excuse me, Airport Boulevard to Florida Street. And then the final step would be Florida to Sage Avenue. Uh, there are a lot of drainage issues in this area, and I'm uh, happy we're able to take this uh, first step towards resolving those. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. In a discussion, all in favor? Aye. In opposed? <coughs> Motion passes. Resolutions held over. 21. Oh, are there any objections to taking all these together? Okay. Okay. 21698, authorized contract with Tetra Tech for disaster debris removal monitoring services. Motion, motion to <coughs> delay the vote until November 9th. Second. Been properly moved and second in discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 In opposed? Pass. Zero one seven one two authorized agreement with Gallup build, Builders for Church Street Cemetery West Wall Repairs. Zero one seven one three authorized agreement with Will <coughs> Amanor to provide tennis lessons and clinics for the Parks and Recreations Department. Zero eight seven one four approved item-based bid for graphics for MPD vehicles. 08715, approved purchase order to Med Inc. LLC for EOD bomb suit and accessories for police administrative services. 08716, approved purchase order to Whistling Dis Mukes for 50 trimmers for the motor pool. 09717, transfer monies from MIT's operating account to their capital account for carpet replacement. 21718, authorized contract with Bill Smith Electric for emergency generator and service modification at fire station number 16. 21719, authorized contract with Bill Smith for lighting upgrade at MIMS Park. And 6721, approved settlement agreement and release of claims. So moved. Second. Properly moved and second in discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? This passes. Consent resolutions have been introduced for the first time. 6724 through 03738. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, 739. <laughs> uh, yeah, motion. Uh, uh, Mr. Vice President, I move that we suspend the rules and uh, take these items up for immediate consideration. Can I get a second? Second. Right. Proper move and second in the discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. In opposed? Madam Clerk. 
60, 724, 725, 726, and 727 are determining appropriations to LAD People's Sports and Entertainment Complex, People United to Advance the Dream, Center for the Living Arts doing business as <coughs> Alabama Contemporary Arts Center, and um, the Japanese Garden Foundation serve a public purpose in approving payment. 27737 requires security payment of $16,170 from District 1 candidate Shemine Fortune Thompson for a recount of votes for District 1. 03738 appoint Catherine Pierce to the Mobile Library Board and what is this one? Uh, 21739 authorizing um, a contract with Thompson Engineering Services. Right. Extension amendment. So moved. November 3rd. So moved. 30th. 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 Second. Member moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 In opposed? Passes. Resolutions being introduced for the first time 08728 through 47736. By council rules, these items will lay over one week. Announcements. Uh, Ms. Rich. Oh, thank you very much. Um, first, would like to um, remind everyone that this Saturday is the 20th anniversary of 9 11. Um, for those of us who experienced that day, if you'll share what that meant to you and how it affected your life with your children or grandchildren that were not present on this earth at the time, it's real important that we never forget what transpired that day. And again, that's Saturday, 9-11. Um, and it's 20 years, seems like it was only yesterday. That's how monumental at least for me personally so I'd like to just remind everyone about that thank you okay. mr. Richardson no announcements well, <laughs> mr. Williams no thank you Ms. Gregory good mr. Dave what? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't want Ms. Rich to be the long range, <laughs> but uh, go and have some uh, excitement news on next week. Um, Vitalize DIP uh, got some plans coming forth for the community that's coming up this fall, and we'll be making those announcements on next week. Also, just want to encourage all citizens, please, please get vaccinated. Um, COVID has not gone nowhere. Actually, it's worse than it ever been. Uh, before, if you love yourself, if you love your loved ones, please get vaccinated. Do we have anything from the administration? Okay. Can I get a second? Second. Been properly moved and second to adjourn. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. In opposed? No. Meeting is dismissed. Um, Reggie, you get it? Yes, sir. Discussing it. 
Yeah, well, that's what I think yeah. we're talking about, like increasing it to like four million or something. Yeah. Uh, but in the meantime, I still have some things that I have to get settled with on hold because some things are not included in mine mm-hmm. that I would make commitments on. So I talked to him about it last week, and he said he was going to get the storage for the mayor, got all the team, you 